So good evening, my dear fellow members. Allow me to introduce myself first. My name is Hedis Tsai. I graduated from National Taiwan University with a major in finance and a minor in interpretation. And I once served as the president of Andrew Toastmasters about three years ago. And so I found it an honor to be invited back to join this meeting and give you a little sharing. I believe after last night's meeting, you guys are very, very clear about what a language evaluator is going to do in the meeting. But I have to reiterate it again. And we tonight in my evaluation, I will also want to share how to become a language evaluator. So first, let's see, um, a language evaluator, you have to do you have comment on good use of the English in the whole meeting. Also, you have to point out the appropriate use of English in the whole meeting. So you are you have to very you have to be very attentive in the whole meeting, and also you have to have the ability to capture and classify what you have heard into categories that make sense to the audience. So finally, you have to offer a suggestion to um, how to improve the English quality of the meeting. So it is very, very crucial role in the meeting. So also very challenging. Let's see. So what are the good use of English? Um, good use of English contains the vivid use of language. So instead of saying, I lost my confidence, you can say, my confidence was shattered into pieces. See, the power is strengthened. And also, like uh, metaphors are also good use of English. Metaphors are like uh, two words or phrases or um, some kind of segment of words. You use it in an imaginative ways to describe other things implicitly, then there will be metaphors. So for example, you say that happy talk session but actually, we talk, We are talking about our failures, bad memories, or it's an unhappy talk session. So we can show, we can see that you have the creativity, and also you have the imagination. The next one would be, also a very good technique would be the similes. You say that your laughter is my power. Your laughter is my power. So excellent, because you use the technique of simile. The fourth, the fourth one um, also would be a good use of English. That would be the rule of three. The rule of three is very, very magic. Sometimes I would see that people sort of have an affection for a three. If you only list two, then people with that, uh, you have to say one more. For example, um, but I think the table talk master did this very well. For example, he said that, what are the, basic, uh, what are the beautiful places in Taiwan? the beautiful mountain, the amusement park, and the delicious restaurant. See? Then, then your content is very fruitful. Another good use of English can come um, is alliteration. Alliteration means the use of the same letter of sound at the beginning of words, then they are close together. But unfortunately, we didn't see much of this in today's meeting, so we skip, uh, we skip it. Also, the right. The latter two are the techniques that we seldom use in tonight's meeting. So I recommend everybody, you, if you want to enhance it, if we want to enhance your speech, you want to enhance your whole performance, then you can refer to the six techniques on how to improve your speech. So what are the appropriate, an appropriate use of English? I would classify them into the following. The first one is colloquialism. Everybody knows Andrew Toastmasters is a formal occasion. People came here to learn how to deliver public speech. So if a public speech, uh, what if I said my English is really sucks? Actually, it's, um, first, it's not gr grammatically correct. And the second is too colloquial. It's sort of informal in a formal meeting. So I would recommend you to say, this travel not only reminded me 
my weakness of English, but also stimulated my desire to learn English well. And that's why I came to this meeting. See, in a moment, we became elegant. <laughs> um, the second one is Chinglish. Chinglish is combined by Chinese and English. Chinese and, uh, so Chinglish is neither Chinese nor English. So <laughs> we have to avoid this. I, um, there are a lot of Chinglish, um, people will say a lot of Chinglish, but um, you have to bear in mind that don't create your own new words. Okay, is uh, people have the tendency to create their own words to communicate, but if the words only communicable in Chinese, then it doesn't count as English. For example, I has a lot of funny points. Funny points actually are not English. We we would say punch lines. Punch lines. P U N C H L I N E S. Punch lines. Punch lines are the funny points in Chinese. Okay. The third point that we have to avoid in our language use it would be grammar. I found the biggest problem in everybody's speech is we tend to forget that if we want to describe a, a story or an event that happened in the past, then we have better use the past tense. But we sort of have to ignore the importance of the tense. So um, don't act like you are uh, sitting in a time machine now, <laughs> um, traveling in different time ages. So we have to remind ourselves that grammar is very important. Also, I also heard that the, the lake is big and is around by trees, but actually we would say the lake is big and is surrounded by trees. I'm with the kind heart, but actually we would say I have the kind heart. Oh, another one, don't be so panic. Actually, panic is a verb, but if we want to use the is adjective form, we would say don't be so panicky. P-A-N-I-C-Y-K-Y. P-A-N-I-C-K-Y. And the fourth mistake that we would make in our speech would be the approval and the singular myth. The plural and the singular problem happens to everybody. So, for example, uh, when you say, I imagine my audiences were, are watermelon. Actually, audience and audiences are both acceptable in English, but they are different. How different? Audience refers to a, people, a group of people gathered together in a setting and listening or reading, watching a show or in exhibition, just like us. So we have to, we have to say audience instead of audiences. So what are audiences? Audiences means, to, uh, means a group of people in particular who read or watch or listen to the same thing. So we would say um, the audiences of April Daily, the audiences of Business Weekly, okay. The fifth one of the mistakes would be the wrong collocation. What is collocation? Collocation means sort of like match of words. When you eat coffee, when you drink a coffee, you would, you would add something, then something would be sugar. When you eat potato chips, you would, um, you would add ketchup, right? So coffee and sugar, potato chip, um, french fries and ketchup, they are they are collocations. They collocate with each other. So basically, you cannot put the wrong word in front of the appropriate word. Say, well, I heard somebody said, um, if you want to choose universities, then you have to take, take reference for it. Take reference for it. Actually take a reference, don't collocate. So we would have better, you, if you want to choose universities, then you had better take my introduction into consideration. Or you can say, you had better refer to my introduction. The last one would be the pronunciation. People tend to pronounce some words wrong, but if it is communicable, then I would think it's okay. Since English is a 
language that we have to communi communicate with each other. So we don't have to put too much effort on picking out people's pronunciation. But I have to say, if we say um, neglect the problem, no, the stress is in the second syllable, neglect the problem. So overall, my conclusion would be being a language evaluator is very challenging. It's not an easy task at all. You have to do the multitasking. You are like a juggler. You have to play a lot of balls at a time. So in the meeting, you have to listen attentively to the, all the speakers and also write down some notes. Aside from writing notes, you have to analyze them and organizing and categorizing them into the right category. And finally, you present in a, in a very well-organized hall. So how to become a language evaluator? It sounds very pretty challenging and very, very demanding. Yes, it is. But Toastmaster is the right place then for everybody to come. Since you have joined Toastmaster, so we have Toastmaster's camp, then I would just say language, language evaluator is not for everyone. But first, you are, if you are reasonably fluent in the language, English language, and you can speak 99% of grammatically correct sentences all, all the time, and also you have the confidence to listen, and to listen well and to be able to comment why the sentence you heard is wrong, why the sentence you heard is inappropriate, why the sentence you heard is, is not just suitable in a formal meeting, then you have the talent to become a language evaluator. Sounds challenging. So in Toastmasters, we have a lot of positions to fulfill everybody's needs. You want to practice your English. If your English is already good enough, then you can take more challenging positions, just like this. So finally, I would like to give everybody a word, uh, several, several words like uh, um, Everybody likes him here because we want to improve our English. Also, the public speech. Somebody have somebody has the stage of right, but the final recommendation would be: if you want to start, you don't have to be good. But if you have to be good, you have to start. Toastmasters, evening.